cut. In the doghouse if you keep bugging me, cause I'm sick and I'll tell mom if you don't let me watch TV. What's wrong with you? I got a headache and a stomach ache. Then why aren't you in bed? Cause I want to watch my cowboy show. You look alright to me. I'm not faking. I couldn't go to school because I'm sick. Daddy's sick in bed too. And mom believes me anyway. So shut up. Your dad is asleep? He and mom went at it last night pretty hard. He stayed in bed. I saw what she did to him. It was pretty bad. What did she... Like you don't know. I saw you and her on the couch last Wednesday night. Guess that's why she's grounded now, huh? Too bad you wouldn't pay me and I had to tell, huh? What are you talking about? What girl? What? Is there an other one too? Wait till I tell. I don't know what girl you're talking about. All summer it's been Stephanie this and Stephanie that. And now you don't remember? You think I'm dumb or something? No, I just can't remember anything like I said. Well, you better remember quick, because the wedding's in two weeks. What? Leave me alone so I can watch TV. I said I don't want to talk about her anymore. That's a weird looking television. Come to think of it, this whole place looks totally retro. What do you mean retro? All TVs look alike. Sure, basically. But this is one old fashioned clunker. Old fashioned? It's brand new. Yeah, but look at the tube. Where's the remote control? What's that? I... Now that I think about it, I can't remember. And what was that you said? About retro rockets? No, retro. It means... It means... Oh man, I know what I mean. That everything here is wrong. But I can't picture the difference. Then shut up and quit bugging me. I'm watching my terrible show. Have you noticed that your show is in black and white? What else? Color? On a TV? Well, I... I think I've seen a color television before. Have not! Quit it or I'm gonna tell! Hey, look at that! Your mother lets you watch this stuff? Sure. This is part of history. What made America great. And besides, blood and guts are needed. Well, you can't stop me, so let me alone, or else. Good. Finally. Well, hello there. How about some cookies? There's plenty of rejects in the trash. Who are you? That's a fine way to talk to your mother. You're my mother? That's right. Though sometimes I get treated like the hired help around here. I don't remember you. Of course you don't. Until you need your socks washed. No, you don't understand. I can't remember where I am or even who I am. Land's sake, stop your joshing, won't you? Honestly, Steve, I thought you'd grow up a little after graduation. I only hope that new job will plant your feet on the ground. So that's my name. Steve. Your name will be M.U.D. Mud if you don't stop teasing me, young man. Listen, this may sound strange, but I've lost my memory. Do you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious! Sure, and next you'll be telling me you don't remember Hank and your little sister. Sister? Shh, you'll wake her. I just put her down to sleep. If she wakes up, she'll just want to eat again. Darn it, I'm busy, and if you think I'm going to play along with this nonsense, you're crazier than Sparky down at the firehouse. Fine, maybe I am crazy. I can't rule that out. Why can't you just help me a little? Is that too much to ask? Now you've done it. Are you happy? Poor baby. 
There, there. Did your brother scare you? Let me see. Darn that wasp woman. She's a monster, that's what she is. Wasp woman? Tetsuya Crumb is going to hear about this. I want you to go to her house right now and give her a piece of my mind. I don't know where she lives. Honestly, you can't miss a house covered with paper nests. Steve, you tell her to mind her own beeswax or by golly, I'll take it up at the PTA. Or the lodge. What lodge? The Hall of the Order of the Harvest Moon, Steve. It's just the finest place in Harvest and the most exclusive. What's so great about it? Hard to say since hardly anyone gets inside, but it wouldn't be so exclusive if it wasn't just wonderful. Just like the new Reynolds dishwasher with their patented auto dry process TM. I've never used one, but I know I want it. Instead of sulking around the house all day, why not walk over to the lodge and apply for membership? That's wonderful, Steve. If you got into the lodge, you'd be the talk of Harvest. Harvest is a town unlike any you've ever known. In what way? I don't have time to go into it now. Why not take a walk around town and pester someone else? I'm busy. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Hey Steve, I'm Jimmy James. Remember me? Uh, I guess not. Hey, how come you haven't been putting the paper out for me in the morning? Yeah? Well try to remember, will ya? How'd you expect a working Joe to make an honest living? You don't put the paper out, I'm out of a job. So what? You don't get paid for picking up papers anyway. The Sentinel building burnt down. What the heck else am I supposed to do? Listen, start putting that paper out and everything will be Jake, okay? That's all I want. That and a pair of sneakers. Walking this route every day has worn holes in mine. Say, you got any spare sneakers? Oh, gee whiz. Look, if you find any, I'd be willing to trade you for them. Something really neato. Think about it. See you later, alligator. now. See how easy it is? Things are so much better between us when you remember the paper in the morning. And let's keep them that way. There he is, my future son-in-law. And how's he doing today? What brings him to the Pottstown household, huh? Huh? Oh, you'll have to ask the missus about that. Stephanie's grounded to the wedding. <laughs> Can't have her changing her mind at the last minute. Not with all that meat at stake. Meat is the foundation of any decent society. Everyone needs at least three servings of red meat a day. And anyone who says otherwise is a commie. And once you're married to Stephanie, I'll be part of the family too. And your father will give me all the meat I want. <sighs> kind of makes up for not getting into the lodge. Well, don't look at me. Mrs. Potsdam wants Stephanie to study hard for her finals. If it was up to me, you could go straight upstairs, but you know, <laughs> the little woman will have to ask her permission to see Stephanie. Sorry, Steve. The last thing I want to do is upset you and your father before the wedding. Not with the meat at stake. You will remind your dad about the meat. 
Won't you? Tell me about this wedding. Well, it looks like we're going to have to hold the wedding down at the funeral parlor, since I'm not a member of the lodge. <laughs> Mr. Moynihan has given his okay, and your father is going to cater the affair <laughs> with plenty of meat. Why are you so anxious to get into the lodge? There's wonders inside. I've heard there's more meat in there than they know what to do. Now that you're of age, Steve, you might go down to the post office and fill out a lodge application. They're always looking for new blood. Tell me about this wedding. Well, it looks like we're going to have to hold... Moynihan is the undertaker. He also runs the Wayward Hotel. Since he's providing the space for the wedding, you might stop by and say hello to him, just to be sociable. But whatever you do, be sure to say hi to your father for me. Will you do that? Tell him hi, and remind him of the meat. Hello, Steve. Have you flossed today? Honestly, you men can insult a woman without even knowing you've done it. What a horrible thing to say. We're both standing around baking cookies. Same kind of dress. Same pearls. So bizarre. There's nothing bizarre about baking cookies. The Harvest Charity Bake Sale is Friday, you know, and by gosh, Mrs. Marvin Potston Jr. can be counted on to do her share. Just because I'm doing housework doesn't mean I have to be a drudge. It's a wife's duty to look good for her husband at all times. What's wrong with wearing pearls, for heaven's sake? Nothing, but you look like June Cleaver. Some kind of sitcom mom. Sitcom? Jeez, you know. Situation comedy. The weird part is, I can't remember how I know that. I'm much too busy with housework to watch TV. Maybe Mr. Poston would know about sitcoms. Stephanie doesn't watch TV, though. She's grounded. Mr. Poston feels there's too much at stake to allow Stephanie to run around loose. She doesn't want to get married either, huh? Are you saying you don't want to marry my daughter? I don't know your daughter, Mrs. Potsdam. Why is she grounded? Afraid she'll run away before the wedding? No! She's as delighted as we are about the wedding. Every bit as delighted as we are. But she might get hit by a car, or a falling piano, or who knows what. Mr. Poston wants us all to be one happy family, and he doesn't want to risk anything happening at the last minute. I don't see any reason why not. You mustn't be too hard on Mr. Poston, Steve. He's a disappointed man. No matter how many lodge admission forms he fills out, they keep turning him down. He has a new application in, though, so keep your fingers crossed. If he joins the lodge, you and Stephanie can have your wedding in the Chapel of Love rather than over at Moynihan's place. Mr. Moynihan runs the Wayward Hotel and the Shady Oaks Funeral Parlor. It's rumored he has connections with the Lodge, but the Order keeps that kind of thing secret. So Mr. Poston has tried to get him to put in a good word for his Lodge application, but so far... Give my regards to your parents.
Who are you? What are you doing in my room? Haven't you heard? We're getting married. So, you're the one. Steve, isn't it? You mean... you don't know me? I mean I don't know anyone! I don't remember anything! How many times do I have to say it? Just one, Stephanie, because... I can't remember a damn thing either. Really? Oh God, I thought it was just me. You're not alone. Can you tell me what's going on here? Those people downstairs have locked me in my room. They say I'm grounded until the wedding. They claim to be my parents. I can't dispute it because I can't remember for sure one way or the other, but it doesn't feel right. Do you have any idea where you do belong? No, but I'm fairly sure I don't belong in Harvest. Yeah. I can't remember anything. But I feel in my heart that the woman downstairs is not my mother. She's like this... thing. Like a parody. A bad joke with mother as the punchline. Does that make any sense? I'm glad I'm not the only one who sees it that way. I thought I was going crazy. Join the club. But we can't both be crazy, Stephanie. Either way, something really weird is going on here. I've got to escape, and so do you. Because in a way, whether you know it or not, I think we're both grounded. It's been hell. They treat me well, but they won't let me leave this room. Not even to go out in the yard. Not until the wedding. They won't tell you why? Each one blames the other for grounding me. They make up different excuses. Different things I did. None of which I remember. So I sit up here. Watch the world outside my window. And listen to the noises in the house. Every morning, a weird boy comes to the house and picks up the paper. He doesn't deliver the paper. He picks up scrap paper that Miss Potsdam sets out on the porch for him. Some morning she forgets, and the boy gets furious. He gives me the creeps. Anything else you can tell me? I hear these weird... scraping sounds in the bathroom sometimes. Like something is sliding along the wall. Claws, maybe. And Mr. Potsdam. I don't like the way my dear daddy looks at me. Both of them are always watching me. Especially him. You don't think they're dangerous, do you? I think this whole place is dangerous. I think we've got to escape. Before it's too late. Escape? Harvest is a prison, Steve. Don't forget that. Of course I'm right! Everything in Harvest seems to revolve around this damned lodge. This... Order of the Harvest Moon. They're responsible for this insane bake sale that's coming, and for the Harvest Blood Drive, too. When people talk about the lodge, it's always in this hushed, reverent tone. Mom keeps telling me that women can't join. But she keeps pressuring me to get you to join. She's not the only one who wants me to sign on with the Lodge. That's probably the worst thing you could do. You think the Lodge is some kind of trap? I think all of Harvest is a trap. That's true. Maybe joining the Lodge is the way out. Look, why not explore the town a little? I can't get out of here, but if I could, that's what I'd do. Maybe you can figure out what's happening here without going anywhere near the Lodge. You're really afraid of the Lodge, aren't you? I look at that building, all lit up at night, and I get scared. I mean, look at the damn thing! Seem like a harmless bunch of masons to you? Maybe my amnesia isn't total after all. More familiar to me. Like we've met before. In another life. Maybe we really do live here. Maybe we were together, 
And the same thing happened to both of us. An accident. Something. Neither of us has bumps on our heads, if that's what you're getting at. Have you been able to remember anything else? Anything at all? Well... I have had these recurring dreams. Just fragments, really. Strange, abstract images. Liquid, chrome... Probably just a dream. Well, have you thought about how to escape Harvest? The wedding is only three weeks away. Not much time to get to know each other, is it? No? If it comes down to it, we just won't take the vows. I don't think anything in Harvest is that simple. Too many people are determined that we get hitched. Why? Potsdam wants the meat your father promised him. Your parents want to force you to settle down. Mrs. Potsdam wants to have the wedding in the lodge. Me? I just want to escape. Come back and visit me soon, okay? Hello, dear. Come to see Stephanie, have you? She's upstairs. Go right on up. Just remember, she's grounded until the wedding. Give my regards to your parents. Steve, how's your father? Is he better? Uh, about the same, I guess. He's been away from work for weeks, and when I call your house, your mother won't let me talk to him. I haven't seen him either. This is a fine kettle of fish, I must say. Though I am glad to see you taking an interest in the business in your dad's absence. Who are you? Aw, oh, Steve, I didn't want to believe that amnesia hokum. Now you're saying you don't remember your pal Pat O'Reilly? You may come to realize that this business is not for everybody. Just ask your poor, ill dad. It takes dedication and a strong stomach. A lot of times when I'm finished scrubbing up and digging the bits of intestine out from my fingernails, I must confess I don't have much appetite for red meat. But red meat is one of the principal food groups and you've got to have it. So when you can do this all day and help yourself to a juicy red steak afterwards, then by golly, you can call yourself a butcher. Of course, amnesia would certainly help that, wouldn't it? What exactly is wrong with your dad? I don't know. I can't get in to see him. Come to think of it, I don't see any cattle around here. Where do you keep the animals? <laughs> Does it matter? The end product is all the customer cares about, Steve. And we only carry the finest meat. Only the juiciest cuts. Once you take over the business, you'll realize the importance of maintaining quality while cutting costs. We know what we're doing here, Steve. If we didn't, would the Lodge use us to cater their affairs?
Your father's very particular about the profit, Steve. No freebies for anyone. But seeing how you're his son, if you'll bring written permission from your father, I'll give you the meat. Don't be such a stranger, Steve. And my best to your dad. Oh, Steve, what are you doing sneaking up on me like that? God, for a second I thought you were Mr. Johnson. Ah, <sighs> what would you like to order? Sure, and my name's Edna Fitzpatrick. I'm not the one with amnesia. Then you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. I guess I've changed. I'm not kidding. Now, Steve, faking amnesia won't help anything. If you don't want to marry Stephanie, then don't. But don't play sick, for heaven's sake. I'd expect that from Karen, not an 18-year-old. You've met Karen, my 8-year-old. Other than the diner, she's all I have. There isn't a nicer girl in Harvest than Stephanie, Steve. You should be grateful that she's promised you her hand. I don't remember that happening, Edna. Honestly, you men are so childish. I don't know what it is about marriage that turns even the bravest man into a coward. I was going to marry Karen's father when he just up and ran out on me one night. I heard that he joined the lodge. But if he did, I never saw him come out again. Even Sheriff Duane wasn't able to find out what happened to him. Mr. Johnson has a... a liking for me. I call it a crush, but that's too innocent a word. He's a bitter man with too much time on his hands. He's never gotten over being rejected by the Lodge, and there's something unwholesome in the way he looks at me. I'm always glad when the Sheriff comes in every day at noon. Sheriff Duane is such a dear man. And I don't just say that because he's my most regular customer. Every single day, rain or shine, he comes in here at noon for lunch. Sits in the same spot, too. That's at least an hour every day when I can be sure Mr. Johnson won't show up. You know, it's funny. Duane never comes in here with Deputy Loomis, but he frequently dines with Mr. McKnight. You know, the owner of the TV station. Sometimes he comes in with Postmaster Boyle, but somehow I don't think they're friends. Though I see them together a lot, Boyle and the Sheriff never act very friendly towards each other. Almost like there's some kind of bond between them besides friendship, though what it might be I can't imagine. Maybe Sheriff Duane resents the fact that he's never been able to get into the Lodge. Though that's not Boyle's fault. He just hands out the applications. He doesn't decide who gets admitted. The Lodge is the repository of all wisdom. You should join the Order of the Harvest Moon, Steve. And soon. Why? For God's sake, what is it about this place? The wheat ripens and waits not for the scythe. The farmer who waits too long, it were better that he use the scythe to rip his own stomach out than to stay his scythe when the wheat ripens. The Harvest Moon wanes and then comes winter. An empty belly, the body son's belly, gurgling within or bloody on the ground. What does it benefit a man if he gains his soul and loses the world? You hunger. Feed yourself. Before it's too... late. Oh. Edna? Steve. What happened? Were we talking about Boyle? Or was it Karen? You seem strange there for a minute. I'm sorry. I'm under a lot of stress. Running this diner all alone. Forgive me. 
stop by anytime, Steve. Hi, what's your name? Karen. What are you doing? Playing. My mom is working, so I gotta stay out of her hair. Wanna play? Not now, maybe later. Okay. Bye bye. Can I help you, dear? Who are you? This is Phelps General Store. So who would that make me? Maybe you need to go back to Gein Memorial and have Miss Whaley teach you about logic. I'm fuzzy on a lot of things these days. My memory's gone. Shaw, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious. I need some help. Well, they say a sharp blow to the head is a good thing for amnesia. In which case, I'd recommend Miss Whaley again. Then again, they say a good scare can jog the memory. In which case, I'd advise you to visit the sergeant at arms over at the lodge. That man gives me the willies. Speaking of willies, how's your father? Don't know. Haven't seen him. Care to buy anything today? Just point to whatever you want. I'm a little hard of hearing. Hello, Steve. Just point to... A girly magazine? Why, Steve, I'm surprised at you. I'd expect that sort of thing from Deputy Loomis, but never from you. He's always coming in here oogling the girly magazines behind my counter. Darn if I'd sell him one, though. I know his wife, for heaven's sakes. Well, will you sell me one? I certainly will, Steve. That kind of interest is healthy for a young fellow. Stares him away from being a fireman. By George. Oh, by Jiminy. Oh, this here's the real thing. Oh, can I have it? Oh, oh, thank you, Steve. Excuse me, kiddo. I gotta go check the jail for clean towels.
Hello, Steve. Where's Loomis? Yeah, but come around. I'm out. Here she comes. Oh, oh, that's good. <gasps> Loomis, damn you! <laughs> Wait, no, 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 you no! Uh, no! Standing up the mattress again! No. Folding up the towels! No, I ain't no. Snake! No! No! no. Yes? I need some help, Mr... Postmaster Boyle. What can I do for you today? Mm, sorry, youngster. We're out of applications right now. Come on. You must have one around here somewhere. Well, I do have the master, but you can't write on that. And I only make copies once a month on the button. Regular as clockwork. It's not the effort, son. It's the principle. We must adhere to our standards. They're all that stand between civilization and chaos. I'm sorry, you'll just have to come back in a month, same as anyone else. And even then, I can't guarantee you'll get an application. The line is always long, and they are never enough to go around. It's very important that I get in quickly. That's what they all say. Postmaster Boyle, I'll just die if I don't get into the lodge. I can't make an exception, young man. It just wouldn't be right. Next time you post, don't forget the zip code! What does this mean? Hmm, this is unexpected and awkward. But my luck's been bad ever since Duane found that darn gas can at the newspaper building the day after the fire. He has this insane notion that it's mine. I pay him, not because I'm guilty, but because I don't want him slurring my good name around Harvest. Oh, naturally. You know, he keeps that gas can in the evidence room at his office. I'd be really grateful to whoever could fetch me that can. Grateful enough to provide him with a lodge application. Oh, and Steve, you'll keep this to yourself, if you're smart. Oh my god, I can't believe it. After all this time... Where's my application, Boyle? Here, take it. With my thanks. You know, this morning as I was making my rounds, I noticed an awful lot of television aerials on the roofs. Seems like more and more each day. You got me this can just in time, youngster. I may have need of it again. What do you mean? There's another reason why Sheriff Duane didn't investigate the Sentinel fire. If you'd like to get something else on the blackmailing bastard, check around the television station. Why you still can? That's a ticket. I see you've managed to acquire an application that demonstrates resourcefulness, a desirable trait for prospective members. 
you need a rest, report back here for your next assignment. See how easy it is? Things are so much better between us when you remember the paper in the morning. And let's keep them that way. Swell! Here's the keys to the broom closet at Gein Memorial. That's where they meet every day. About 3.45, as soon as everyone has gone home. Sometimes I hide in there beforehand. And daddy -o, I see some stuff that's real nasty. Take it from me. You made a good swap. in the school broom closet? What will people think? Are you blackmailing us, you little shit? Calm down, Mr. Harrell. Stephen would never do that. He's a smiley bear. But we should give him a token of our appreciation for his silence. Here, Stephen, take this baseball bat. You'll find it quite useful. That a boy. Take the bat, and we'll take the photo. However will I keep the children in line now? I have a spare I can bring in tomorrow. Unless you'd prefer a chainsaw this time. I'll talk to Mrs. Phelps. I take it you wish to be initiated into the mysteries of the Order of the Harvest Moon. Securing the application was but the first step on your road to enlightenment. Now you must complete a series of tasks to prove your worthiness as an initiate. What kind of tasks? Minor pranks, really. Nothing overly difficult. More tests of wit than prowess. But to complete them, you must, if you wish to enter these walls. Minor prank, eh? I'll bet. What have you got in mind? There is in Harvest a man named Mr. Johnson. He owns a tucker. It is his pride and joy. I should like you to put a scratch in it. A scratch? That's all? As I said, a minor prank. Mind you, you are not to damage the vehicle. Merely put a single scratch in it. Once you have done so, Return here, and 
I shall give you your next task. Did it. What are you doing here at this hour, Mr. Potsdam? I'm burying our cat. She passed away and I'm burying her. Go away and mind your own business. Then, where's the cat? I... I left her at home. Now leave me alone! This kind of stuff can come back to haunt you.
Hello, dear. How are you today? By the way, I spoke with Mr. Johnson and he's living. Seems someone scratched up his priceless Tucker. If he finds out who, there'll be heck to pay. Edna's daughter Karen has disappeared. Karen was playing outside as Edna closed the diner and that's the last anyone saw of her. I haven't the foggiest idea. All I know is she went missing last night. But Steve, this isn't something you want to be concerned with. Trust me. You should be concentrating on joining the lodge, not some missing girl. Isn't a lost child everyone's concern? Then let everyone worry about it. This is nothing but a waste of time for you. If you spend your time in Harvest looking for Karen, you'll regret it. My time in Harvest? You talk like I'm a visitor, Mom. Don't be silly, dear. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Hey, Steve. You've been doing a swell job putting the paper out in the morning. You just keep doing that and we won't have any problems. That's not much to ask, is it? Thank God I found you. Are you alright, Karen? I want to go home. Could you take me to my mommy's store? Or to the policeman? Can you tell me who did this to you? Mr. Potsdam told me he'd hurt my mommy if I told. He won't do anything, I promise. Tell me what happened. He made me play house. Then he dug a hole. Please, I just want to go home now. Please. Can you tell me your address, honey? I don't know. Just take me to the store or the policeman. Please. Mommy said to go to the policeman if I got lost. And I'm lost. Oh my God, Karen, thank God, what happened? Found her in the graveyard. She was buried alive, and she claims Mr. Potsdam was responsible. Thank you, Steve. Thank you from both of us. Here, here's the reward money. Take it and go. I need to be alone with my baby right now. So, you have completed your first task. Now that you've scratched the tucker, you may proceed to your second task. You will steal a bolt of fabric from the fireman and bring it to me. Very well then. Use whatever means necessary, but bring the cloth to me here. I shall give you your third task.
Well, that didn't work. Steve, is that you? Come to see your poor old dad? Are you my father? Really? I don't remember you. Please. I'm not in the mood for jokes. I'm serious. Why won't anyone believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Just don't make me laugh now. Remember the stitches. My God, what has she done to you? She doesn't know you're here, does she? Does she? No, I had to break in. What the hell is going on in here? I know it's a mystery to you. The sacred things that husbands and wives do behind closed doors. Maybe we should have that special father-son talk. Especially now that you're getting... married. <sighs> but you need to be forewarned. You need to know what to look out for. The hobby horse and the jello! <sighs> That's alright. Don't get worked up. You need your rest. Yes. Rest. But why did you come? You must have had a reason. For risking it. I need some meat, and Pat won't give me any without your signed permission. Good old dependable Pat. Here, son. Here's my signature. Take it to him, and you won't have any problem. Now go, son. Go quickly. Before she comes back. So, your father okayed the meat, huh? How's he doing? Good, good. Glad to hear it. Here's your meat, son. You run along now. A new shipment of animals has come in and it's time to start cutting. Geez, what are you doing here? Just standing here, waiting to be drawn. You just hang out here? All the time? I'm not a person, Steve. I'm an object. You'd do well to remember that. A person is his job. Someday you'll understand that. And if you don't, it won't matter, because you'll be dead. Dead? Have you gotten your lodge application in yet? Good. You may survive yet. I guess you're here to steal the bolt. Not at all. That's not my job. However, since I am an object d'art, and since art should be interpreted, I'll give you a clue as to where the bolt is located. Darkness gives as darkness gets, but light invoked 
is light shed. All right. Hello dear, how are you today? You know those firemen? The funny ones with the color sense? Looks like they misplaced a bolt of expensive fabric. Of course each one of them suspects the other. Looks like a cat fight is brewing. Congratulations, hero. You found Karen after all. You don't seem proud, Mother. I wonder why. I warned you not to waste time looking for her. Am I running out of time? The blood drive is coming soon. What does that have to do with anything? If you haven't joined the Lodge by then, you'll find out. Still, I'm glad you found the poor baby. She says Mr. Potsdam was responsible for... What happened to her? What a silly little girl. Shame on you! Imagine accusing your future father-in-law of a thing like that. Is that how a range rider would behave? I don't think so. Why would she lie? Okay, Weisenheimer. Even if he is a child molester, a kidnapper, and an attempted murderer, that's no reflection on what kind of father-in-law he'll be. I just can't wait for the wedding. Can you? Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Hey Steve, you've been doing a swell job putting the paper out in the morning. You just keep doing that and we won't have any problems. That's not much to ask, is it? Steve, I'm so glad you came back. 
What have you been doing? I visited the lodge. Talked to the sergeant at arms there. He knows that there's something out of whack here. He told me if I wanted to find out what it is, I should join the lodge. I've decided to join the lodge, Stephanie. I think the answer to all our questions is inside. That place. It's so sinister. You may be playing right into their hands. Did you think of that? Doesn't it seem like you're being herded toward the lodge? That's one of the things I hope to find out. I hope finding out doesn't get you killed. My faux mother keeps me up on the latest gossip. Not like she really wants to talk to me. More like she's feeding me information. For instance, she told me that Mr. Johnson's Tucker was vandalized. That's another weird thing. Every car I've seen drive by is a Tucker. There were only 31 produced. What are the odds of that? I've always wanted a Tucker. Funny that Harvest would be full of them. Any idea who scratched the car? Why would you do something like that? It's part of the Lodge initiation. I see. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but getting into the Lodge is the best way to find out. By committing vandalism? Well, I guess you'll fit right in, won't you? Scratching a car is no big deal. Getting out of this mess is. Sorry. When you put it that way, I guess I was overreacting. You know the firemen? Someone stole some fabric from them, and they're up in arms about it. Another harmless prank? And how many more harmless pranks will you be pulling? However many it takes to get in, Stephanie. If I have to use them to escape, then I will. Are you using them? Or are they using you? It was just a bolt of cloth. You've turned the firemen against each other. They think one of their own stole it. Would you rather stay here? I've heard that harvest is lovely in the fall when the leaves turn orange and gold and the annual blood drive paints the town red. All right, all right. You have a point. Is it true? You found Karen? Yeah, just in time, too. He'd molested her and buried her alive. He couldn't bring himself to kill her outright, so he just decided to stick her in the ground and let fate take its course. Who? Who would do that to a helpless child? She says it was Mr. Potsdam. And I believe her. Oh, Christ. And all this time I've been under the same roof with that... With that thing watching me! Take it easy, okay? So, at least they'll be coming to take him away, won't they? Come back and visit me soon, okay? Exquisite cloth. Its loss should trigger quite a bit of dissension amongst our gallant firefighters. Still, that is not your concern. Your next assignment is to break into the tonsorial establishment of Mr. Pastorelli and abscond with his prized barber's pole.
Hello dear, how are you today? Did you hear what happened at the barber shop? Someone broke into Pastorelli's salon and took his antique barber's pole. The next morning Pastorelli touched some live wires that the thief left lying around and was electrocuted. Well, that darn foreigner got what he deserved if you ask me, coming into a nice little town like Harvest and stealing business. Heavens, if a bowl and scissors were good enough for your father, I don't see why decent working folk need a fancy wop styling their hair. That's how it goes. First you get a sissy trim, then bang, you're a communist. Isn't it exciting, Steve? Five days and 1,200 cookies later, the bake sale is already here. Where does the time fly? Those 1,200 cookies. How many are you taking to the sale? Oh, about 20. The rest were stale. But the effort wasn't wasted. It's for a good cause. Will you be at the school tonight? That's nice, dear. It's good to be open to new experiences. How exactly is this bake sale supposed to benefit hobos and tramps? Mr. Moynihan over at the Wayfarer Hotel can tell you more about that. Either way, I think you should be at the school tonight. What does Moynihan have to do with this bake sale? He was the one who suggested it. I thought the Lodge was sponsoring it. Is he a member? No, but he has ties to the Order. And he's intimately acquainted with the problem. He not only runs the hotel, he's also the mortician. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. are so much better between us when you remember the paper in the morning. And let's keep them that way. And here it is. The object dog. Imported Venetian glass and Italian dreams. You have done well. An unfortunate side effect that Pastorelli was electrocuted because you left live wires in a puddle on the floor. But as those with affectations of worldliness say, say la vie. Pastorelli's own incompetence caused his unfortunate accident. What does it matter that you left live electrical wires hanging in the water on the floor? If he hadn't cross-wired the alarm system to the sprinklers, he'd be alive today, of course. 
You only wanted the ball. But that hardly matters now. Your final assignment is to set a fire in DNA's diner and let the French fry where they may. Stephen, who are you? I am Daniel Moynihan, mortician and proprietor of the Wayward Hotel. Most people ask me why I don't remember their names. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Besides, as one who deals with the dead, I try not to involve myself in the affairs of the living. Your loss of memory is of no concern to me, true or false. Ironic, considering my recent involvement in a charity event. What are you talking about? My complaints were central to the scheduling of the upcoming Harvest Bake Sale. I'm gratified the Order of the Harvest Moon got involved. The proceeds will certainly help cover my losses. It seems that, like some elephant's graveyard, people of low station come to harvest to die. They simply drop dead, penniless, and they all need burials. Like that corpse in the chapel, all dressed up and nowhere to go. No mourners, no point, but I still must provide them with prompt burials by town charter and absorb the losses myself. God knows by putting these people up at the Wayward Hotel I do more than my fair share, so why must I pay for the coffins and burial materials as well? My losses to the dead are substantial. Hopefully the bake sale will offset some of them. I do hope you'll attend the bake sale and spend heavily. It's for the needy, you know. Sure. And all they have to do to benefit is die. A ditch makes a poor resting place. You'll need to learn that. If you ever want to leave Harvest. You make it sound like I have a choice. A choice that is rapidly vanishing. Join the Lodge, Stephen. While you may. This bake sale is a joint effort of the Harvest PTA and the Order of the Harvest Moon. The proceeds will be used to set up a fund for transients. In other words, bums and societal rejects without families who wander into Harvest uninvited. Then, the Order is setting up shelters for the homeless? Not shelters. Graves. You see, a great number of these hobos die while passing through. Don't ask me why, it's what those people do. Use your common sense, Stephen, memory or no. If they were involved in setting up homeless shelters, then why would I be involved? And why would I be sustaining losses? As always, the Order of the Harvest Moon has taken the lead in addressing our societal ills. Through their sponsorship of the Blood Drive and the Bake Sale, the Lodge ensures that all our needs are met. 
needs, such as... Pardon me, there are corpses to prepare, and my losses have been substantial of late. If you're sincerely interested in the order, however, you should stop by the lodge and speak with the sergeant at arms. Why should I be interested, Mr. Moynihan? Of all the spots in Harvest, the lodge is the most prominent, literally and figuratively. It is the ambition of everyone here to join, and join you must to attain wisdom. What kind of wisdom? If I knew, I'd be a member. I have the feeling you have what it takes to join the Order, Stephen. We all believe that. Whether or not you live up to your potential is up to you. It seems that, like some elephant's graveyard, people of low station come to harvest to die. They simply drop dead, penniless, and they all need burials. Like that corpse in the chapel, all dressed up. God knows, by putting these people up at the Wayward Hotel. The corpse reclining in the chapel right now is a prime example of the difficulties I face. For unfathomable reasons, this bum decided to wander into harvest and summarily drop dead. Just like that? Indeed. He died of purely natural causes. Of that I have no doubt. But why come to Harvest to die? You say this happens often. Isn't that a little too much of a coincidence? I've often puzzled over the situation myself. Though I can assure you, young man, that nothing untoward is happening in Harvest. On the contrary, it's an indication of our compassion that I put up hobos in the Wayward Hotel. And the Order of the Harvest Moon mandates their prompt burial even when they are without family or means, and when it entails losses on my part. I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. Ah, you've taken up photography, I see. Now why on earth would you choose such a grotesque subject? That John Doe you've got boxed up in the chapel? He didn't just drop dead. Someone helped him take the plunge. Hmm. You may be right. I'm a mortician, not a medical examiner. You don't have to be to know that being ripped to shreds can be detrimental to your health. This is not something you want to be looking into, young man. Got the goods, have you? You're in harvest, my young friend. Have you tried the road out of town yet? Do so and you may question exactly who has who. Look, are you going to tell me what I want to know, or do I go to the sheriff with these pictures? That would be a grave mistake, I assure you. I've told you all I can. My losses have been substantial of late, so I can't offer you money. The only thing I can give you in exchange for the photographs is my tube of astro glue. I do suggest you take it, for it's all you'll get from me. A wise decision. When a wasp's nest is stirred up, it is seldom the wasps who grieve later. Hello, Steve. So nice to see you. Mercy, what a terrible thing to say, isn't it, ladies? Yes, terrible. What a good boy you are. Have a cookie. Derelicts and bums who wander into town who don't have enough money for a decent burial. They deserve to be buried. It's the Christian thing to do. That's awful nice of you. 
But why do so many derelicts and bums die in Harvest? Don't be such a wise apple, Steve. Ladies! Someone has just burned down the TV station! On the night of our bake sale? Hey, Steve. Say, can you spare a dime for a buckaroo who's down on his luck? The whole shebang just went up in flames, and I'm looking to mosey on to greener pastures, where the sun sets always golden, and there's always another savage to kill. I've tried so hard to find an excuse to keep on fighting. But Karen and I can't go on alone any longer. This diner he left us was all we had. It was always a struggle to keep it running in such a small town. And now we've lost it. I know that I can't afford to support us now. There's only one way out. I'm sure you won't be able to understand the depth of despair that would enable a mother to put a rope around a baby's neck and push her into the air and jump after her. I wonder if I'll hear her next now. If she kicks around and takes a long time to strangle me, I'll scream, but I won't cut her down. Not 
got to be stronger than I ever was before. But I hope she doesn't get it. God help us and forgive us, Edna Fitzpatrick. Steve, it's so good to see you again. I get so lonely in here. I'm sorry. Want to hear what's happening out in the real world? No. I'd rather forget about Harvest for a while. Stephanie? I feel so close to you, Steve. Like we're the only two people in Harvest. The only two real people. Do you know what I mean? I need to feel something again. This sense I have that I've known you. It's my only link to my past. Yeah. Maybe it's different than memory. Maybe we don't remember each other so much as we recall the feelings deep inside. Strong feelings. Maybe the body has its own memory. Let's find out. Take me. Now. I'm glad to see you. I feel so alone, cooped up in here. I saw the TV station go up from my window. It lighted up the whole town. It looked like hell. I wished it would consume the whole damn place. And me with it. Don't talk like that. I'm sorry. I just can't stand it anymore. I wish there was something I could do. There he is. Make love to me. You wouldn't be taking advantage of me, Steve. I need to be close to someone right now. I'm so lonely. I know. But I can't. I guess I understand. But I can't say I like it. I don't know if you heard or not, but Mr. Pastorelli, the barber, he's dead. Looks like somebody stole a barber's pole from him, then left the exposed electrical wires and some water on the floor. Pastorelli walked in, flipped on the lights, and... Know anything about that? Mr. Swell came by. I heard him telling my father about it. He said it smelled like roast pork. Well, these things happen. Especially around here. I heard that DNA's diner burned down. Why are you looking at me like that? 
Did you torch it, Steve? This had the stamp of another large initiation stunt. Maybe so, but I had nothing to do with it. Thank God for that. She hung herself, you know. And Karen. Can you imagine? Killing your own daughter? The despair she must have been feeling to do something like that? She must have felt there was no way to carry on after the fire. Accidents happen. It was no accident. The sheriff supposedly found evidence that the fire was set. Are you sure you didn't... Would I lie to you? No. I'm sure you wouldn't. Come back and visit me soon, okay? recognize the sign. You will know. When you receive the invitation, bring it here and your initiation shall begin. Hello, oh dear. How are you today? The nerve of some people burning down the TV station to detract from our bake sale. I doubt the perpetrator did it just to annoy the Harvest PTA. Coincidence? I don't think so. Just six months ago, the newspaper building went up in smoke. Obviously, there's a firebug on the loose. Either that or a communist. Steve, I'm so scared. Just ask Colonel Monroe at the missile base. He'll tell you. Now that the bake sale's over, I just don't know how I'll fill my time. Oh, I feel so... useless. My goodness! What's wrong with her? My goodness! Oh, it's not as bad as it looks. You just pop them back in. See? As good as new, that tarantula she ate must have had wasp eggs in it. Don't you think we should get her to a doctor? What for? She's got her mother. How silly I was, feeling useless just because there are no more cookies to bake. I can still rear my brood. This is a sign, Steve. I have a purpose again. Uh, glad to see you're feeling better. Mine, that fire still burns my bridges. First the newspaper building, then DNA's diner, then W-H-A-R. I sense a pattern. And any pattern I can't make a dress out of is no darn good. I suppose you heard about DNA's diner burning down. Sheriff Duane thinks it was a grease fire. Oh dear, I just heard what happened to Stephanie. What do you mean? What happened to her? You haven't heard? 
Well, young man, you march right over there this instant. She's your fiancé, after all. Guess I can forget about the meat, huh? What do you mean? Your dad must have pulled some strings. Be sure and check Stephanie's pillow, you lucky bum. What the hell are you talking about? You'll see once the sheriff gets here. <sighs> Stephanie, Stephanie. Things will never be the same now. Guess I'll be watching TV nights. Okay, you can come in now, son. My God. Is that what I think it is? Yep, it's a spinal cord. Is it Stephanie? I can see a resemblance, but I can't be sure. More pie, Sheriff? Pie? Don't you realize what's happened? Oh, indeed I do. I, I can just hear the tongues wagging at the PTA. W was it suicide? Never heard of anyone pulling their own spinal cord out before. Off the record, I'd have to say no. No, all in all, I'd say this was death by natural causes. Natural causes? You can't live without a spinal cord, son. Nothing unnatural about that. Think I will have some more pie. Right away. I can't believe this. This is horrible. Believe me, you get to the point to where this is routine. Now the only clue we got is that card on our pillow. Take a look at it. This is practically a confession. Confession to what, son? Murder. Isn't that what you're here to investigate? Son, you don't investigate natural deaths. No point. Then I'll get to the bottom of this myself. Yeah, I'm sure you will. More pie, Sheriff? Don't mind if I do. I don't suppose it hurt for you to take the card, seeing as it was addressed to you. The shucks, I'm sorry I had to read it in the first place, but that's my job. Say, I wonder if there's more pie. Hello, Steve. Have some pie? Well, what family doesn't have its little problems? If it's not poor dental hygiene, it's a spinal column on the bed. You received the invitation, but you have not brought it. I don't understand. The invitation was not the card, but the spinal cord. It must be presented to me ere I allow you to enter.
mysteries are only disclosed to members of the Order, not initiates. You were provided an invitation. Bring me the skull and spinal cord if you would pass to the world. What is this? You must now enter the lodge. Initiates find it a hostile place. Are you supposed to help me or get me killed? I'm starting you on the path of initiation to a very special, very exclusive brotherhood. I am merely the administrator of a test. Whether you view me as an enemy or a friend depends on how well you're prepared to pass. And this thing? You haven't said what it is. It is a special weapon. Using it will be part of the initiation. Stephanie dead or being held within? The membership director on the second level keeps track of such things. Oh great, then you are against me. I am the sergeant at arms. I am here to ensure that the protocols are observed. Deviation from a protocol 
shall result in punishment. Remember what I have told you. Now, let the initiation begin. Ah, you're here. Excellent. You'll find them through that door. Excuse me? You are the exterminator, are you not? No. In that case, I'm afraid you'll have a hard time of it, sir. Recently, the Lodge has become infested by pests. They need exterminating or, to be blunt, sir, they need killing and plenty. We're not speaking of cockroaches. A bewildering variety of deadly beasts lie beyond, and just before the annual board meeting. Dreadful. I wish you good luck, sir. I only hope you can stomach what's ahead. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself, killing my clientele. Ever since the monsters invaded this level, the members have taken to dining with the Grand Poobah upstairs. Actually, I have to admit, my last few meals haven't been up to snuff. The problem is the freshness of the corpses, or lack thereof. See, the supply has dried up. The Sergeant-at-Arms always used to insist that bodies killed in the lodge be disposed of without trace. 
and so the members would bring me their business for preparation and dissemination. Sorry, you'd need to talk to the membership director up on too. Can you tell me anything that might help me? Not really. Welcome to the Harvest Moon Art Gallery, sir. I'm the curator of this place. So delighted you could come. That's always the dilemma, sir. What are the boundaries of art? Only you can answer that, and only for yourself. Lovely works, pastoral scenes, noble sculptures. These are easy on the eye and mind. But when confronted with a work of hideous form, you are forced to deal with it, even if only to dismiss it as trash. Sadly, the most extreme works are the hardest to dismiss. Grotesqueries amid works of beauty are necessary. That should be taken for granted. Nevertheless, it's important that each individual determine his own sense of aesthetics. For that reason, I give you permission to obliterate that which forces you to linger too long in the gallery. I'm just passing through. If only it were that simple.
I am the chess master. Any initiate who wishes to pass this way must do so over my dead body. Being a civilized man, I offer my opponents a choice. Solve my problem or fight me to the death. Do you know how to play chess? Chess is a civilized game. How sad that we must now resort to a less civilized form of conflict. Excuse me, you can't come in right now, I just mopped the floor. You think just because I'm a janitor I got no pride? That's all I got to do all day is clean up after you rich bastards? Big eyes before you get hurt!
That didn't work. This is the temple of the mystery of abstinence. Do not eat of the food or you will be punished. All within are hereby bound to a vow of abstinence. You obey well, Initiate. Better than your brethren. They have eaten and grown stronger for it. As promised, I will not punish you for your obedience, but they will. And some mothers complain that their children don't come to see them. You, mommy, you're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Shocked? This is the mystery of motherly love. Everyone says motherhood is fulfilling, when in reality, it's draining. <laughs> A 
Oh, yes. I'm such a pessimist. What you must think of me. You don't know the half of it. Welcome to the Temple of the Mystery of Religion. The mystery is thus. Those who preach love and mercy in God's name are often those who call for the death of heathens. Do you believe in God, my son? You are wise. His mercy anoints us all. And where doth he dwell, the Lord? Indeed, any other response would be blasphemous. Answer me this, if word be with you. Does the Lord bounce on a spring or frolic with the wombats? Yes, the fields of the Lord are rife with wombats, and he is their shepherd. Answer thus, if thou be virtuous, doth God Almighty herd them with his staff or with special imported wombat herding equipment? Naturally. God, being almighty, hath no need to import anything his staff doth serve. Now, I ask thee one final question, which is only known to those amongst the ranks of the saved. Is God a jar of strawberry preserves, a size 12 sneaker, a foot-long hoagie, an all-expense-paid trip to Brazil, or a new car you are correct pass in peace brother the Lord is with thee What do you want here? I'm just passing through. You think it's that simple, huh? Just passing through? Well, my family was just sitting around. And look where it got them. The temple of the mystery of morality. My country paid me to kill. And then when I came home, I was out of a job. They expected me to stop? Cold turkey? Is that what they wanted? A paycheck today? Jail cell tomorrow? Am I a criminal or an entrepreneur? Hey, let's find out. Welcome to the Temple of the Mystery of Flesh, Steve. Have a bite? Mr. Potsdam? The mystery is this. Sometimes you have to lose some meat to get some meat. They wouldn't let me in until I demonstrated my worthiness. My invitation came after I buried Karen alive. That showed initiative. And her spinal cord was your ticket in, right? Yes. But to be initiated into the mysteries of the harvest, I had to do one last thing. I let them into the house, and into Stephanie's bedroom. Sorry, that's not my department. 
Now I am a butcher. You should have gotten your dad to hire me on. That way, you could have been the boss. Instead of the prime cut! Hello, handsome. Looking for a good time at a reasonable price? Scorn mixed with desire, that's our lot. Such is the mystery of lust. So often the instruments of lust, as all instruments of higher pleasure, are condemned as frequently as they are sought after. I'd go on about the hypocrisy of a hedophobic society, but I think I'd rather just kill me a man. Welcome to the Temple of Beauty. And am I not beautiful, oh man? Look at my hair, black as a moonless night. Look into my eyes, deep pools of desire. Look at my complexion, pale white and glistening. You bastard! Welcome, Initiate, to the Temple of the Mystery of Pain. The mystery is thus. The simple manipulation of nerves may break one man and yet leave another unmoved. The physiology is the same. All nerves sing alike, yet the results differ. The question can only be answered by paradox. Although the body functions according to the tenets of science, the invocation of pain is an art. My implements are simple things, like a painter's brushes, from which beautiful complexities spring. Different stories brought forth from different canvases, with the different application of a stroke. Ah! I invite you now to torture this man on the table, to explore this blessed mystery yourself. Otherwise, I'll have to teach you the lesson myself. Welcome to the Temple of the Mystery of Charity. What mystery is there in charity, for God's sake? The mystery is thus. Any act of charity is an act of selfishness. For in any charitable exchange, one must take from another, and one is always left the poorer. A feeling. Discouraging answer, Initiate. You see, though I am needy, I do not consider myself a beggar so much as a taker. I require charity, Initiate. Give me something. Charity is a loathsome lie. The only gift that keeps on giving is death.
This is the temple of the mystery of mercy. You're just in time for our little retirement ceremony. As part of your initiation, you'll be required to execute them. That's how all these people are disposed of the lodge. And each member is expected to do his share. In that case, you'll have to get past me. Thus is the mystery of mercy. Life is a competition, and mercy a perversion of the natural order. When you extend mercy to a competitor, you give him a second chance to beat you. Welcome to the Inner Sanctum, big guy. Principal Harold? Within the Inner Sanctum, you will address me as Vice Muck Harold, second in command to the Grand Muckety Muck. He of the Fez and Buffalo Helm, the secret handshake, the funny passwords. Only fitting, given that my role has always been that of an educator, and Harvest is one big classroom. What do you mean? You'll, You'll have, have to, to kill, kill me, me to, to find, find out what he means, means big, big guy. guy. <laughs> 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 Harvest. 
first, the fruit. You're talking about people killing people. Again and again and again, I believe the technical term is serial killer. The harvesters seek to perpetuate terror and discord for our own purposes. We do this through the random utility of murder, and we persevere through our recruitment of initiates like yourself. You want me to become a serial killer? This entire reality has been engineered to break down your resistance, to desensitize you to violence. Now you may become a harvester and re-enter the real world or stay in peace with young Stephanie and spend the rest of your life in the construct known as Harvest. What is the real world at this point? Right now, you are suspended in a sensory deprivation tank wired to a VR tech. If you don't join us, we will terminate your life support and you will be dead within minutes. Those last minutes, however, will seem like a lifetime lived in harvest. You will marry Stephanie and die peacefully of old age. You're presuming a lot. Aside from you, she is the only real person in harvest. Suspended in a tank, jacked in just as you are. I assume you'll want to spend time together. If I stay. Of course, having completed your ordeal, you may leave with her as you intended and enjoy your victory. If, on the other hand, you wish to join us, the cost of exiting the Lodge is the same as the cost of entering the Lodge. A skull and spinal cord. couldn't kill me. These harvesters, they put people through this torture to give them a taste for killing. The way to beat them is to deny them, to live out your life here with me. You're thinking about killing me, aren't you? Didn't you hear what he said? I do exist. If you kill me here, I'll die for real. And I'll feel all the pain, all the terror, because I'm real. Well, after all, what's a murder without pain and terror? We will feed the pain impulses directly into our brain, and then pull the plug. You will be a murderer, this time for real. So what will it be? Life in harvest, or life as a harvester?
kid could have been something. <laughs> Never looked back. We got two more to plug in. There's got to be a better way to develop these serial killers. This is scientific. You want we should go back to the old way? What old way? Good breeding. <laughs>